Welcome back, amazing business owners, to another episode of Business Straight Up, the podcast and place to be for creatives, business owners, photographers who actually want to make a living doing what they love. Welcome back to another edition of Just the Tip Tuesday. <laughs> These are smaller episodes that I can kind of fit in for a little bit of flexibility in my schedule because y'all know I'm a free spirit. I need a little bit of flexibility in my life, right? Today, we are going to talk about the second part, basically the next 10 top lessons from the chaos that was 2020. If you haven't listened to the first part of this series, it is episode 61. You can go to businessstraightup.com slash 061 to hear part one. You do not have to listen to part one before you listen to part two. If you're one of those people that's like, oh, I have to do them in order. I feel you. My OCD kicks in as well or CDO as it should be. For anyone who likes the alphabetized state of that, I feel like I'm, I don't know, my son gets that, but some people won't. It's okay. (laughs) So if you want to listen to the first part, it is episode 061. But today we're going to talk about more lessons, some of my favorite books from 2020 and some quotes that I pulled from them that really hit home for me. 2020 was the year of the good, the bad, and the ugly, like crazy. I don't know. It was chaos. And there were a lot of things that I learned and a lot of things that I would love to share with you. If you love this episode, can you head on over to iTunes and leave a review? I know it's small. It seems silly, but it's so important to us. And we're so grateful. And I'm speaking for all podcasters here. If you love ingesting free content like I do and consuming it and learning so much from the free content that people put out, I want to encourage you to leave reviews views for the people that you love because it means so much to us. So let's jump in and listen to part two of my top lessons from 2020 and all of the chaos that ensued last year. Hey, hey there, awesome people. I am Brooke Summer and you are listening to Business Straight Up, the podcast for creative entrepreneurs to learn, connect, grow, and build the business and life that they dream of. Welcome, let's get going and dive right in. Welcome back, amazing business owners, to another episode of Business Straight Up, the podcast and place to be for creatives, entrepreneurs, photographers, anyone who wants to actually make a living doing what they love. I am excited to have you here today. This is another edition of Just the Tip Tuesday. Here we go. Welcoming March 2021 with part two of the lessons that I learned from the chaos that was 2020. So if you haven't heard part one, I want to invite you to listen to part one. And you can find that at businessstraightup.com slash 061. Or you can listen to part two. There's not really in order. It's all good. You don't have to hear one before you hear the other. Just the tip Tuesday's episodes, as a reminder, are going to be kind of shorter episodes, me sharing my heart, what I want you to know right now. So lessons from 2020. What a chaotic year, right? And as I look back on 2020, I have to tell you, part of my mastermind group and coaching stuff that I go through personally was to look back at 2020 and look at wins. And at first I sat down and I was like, none, no wins at all. (laughs) It was really hard to look back at 2020 and see the good. Now, of course, there's good in everyday stuff. And I have a whole journal that I keep on that. But overall, I was like, I didn't meet some of my goals. I didn't, it just didn't feel like a year full of wins. But when I really started thinking about some of the things that we went through in 2020 and the challenges that we faced and how we figured it out anyway, I actually ended up with a page long list of all the wins, all the things that happened, even if they were small, it's important to celebrate those wins. So part two of lessons from 2020. My first lesson, number one, is that my energy is valuable 
and only I can choose where I spend it. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning here. Just the tip Tuesdays are my chance to just kind of share my heart. And for that reason, you might hear some swear words. So if your kids don't listen to those, or if you don't want your kids to hear them, my kids hear them regularly and know that they're adult words. (laughs) But if you are not welcoming to swear words in your children's ears, you might want to put me in your earbuds or wait until they're in bed. Number one, my energy is valuable and only I can choose where I spend it. One of my coaches years ago used to tell me, you only have so many fucks to give every day. You have to decide what is worth spending your fucks on. (laughs) And that cracks me up. But it's so true. We only have so much energy every single day. And the more that we spend on things that don't matter the less that we're able to spend when things actually do matter. And where this came up for me a lot in 2020 was watching the news. Oh my gosh, you guys, I watched the news every single day. We didn't know what the hell was going on, right? And at first there were presidential address news things every day. And then there were the state ones every single day as well. And it's important to keep people informed. And it was really important to know what the hell was going on. But at the same time, it drained so much of my energy. And then I didn't have that energy to spend where it mattered most with my kids, with my family, with my business, making sure everything was okay so that I could keep going. And I saw myself get burned out very quickly because I was watching the news every day. Now, you've probably heard me talk about in past podcast episodes how I used to be super on top of the news, especially celebrity news. I don't know why. I don't know why I thought it was fun, but I was really, really on top of celebrity news. I knew exactly who was dating who, all about the royals, all of that stuff. And you know what? I gave it up. It is too draining to constantly be worrying about other people's shit all the time. (laughs) Now, the news is a little bit different when it came to especially the pandemic and quarantine, because that did affect me. But at the same time, I had to severely limit what I was focusing on so that it didn't drain me for the rest of my day. I noticed that not only was my mood severely affected, but my kid's mood was severely affected as well. So number one lesson from 2020, actually it's number 11 if we count part one of this series, but my energy is valuable and only I can choose where I spend it. Number two, weed the gardens in your life and remove people unapologetically. This sounds really mean if you don't know the context. (laughs) I love my garden in the back. Now, I'm not very good at gardening, okay? So when I say this, I feel like people are going to see me like with these beautiful bushes and, and this gorgeous like tomatoes and gardens and everything. And that's so not me. I'm not very good at it, guys. But I am very, very consistent about getting those weeds out because they drive me crazy. Like they start to take over my flowers and stuff. And I started to think more and more about this in taking the people out of my life that suck me dry. And I'm talking about the people that don't add anything to your life. They don't serve you at all. And I'm not talking about serving you, like waiting on you hand and foot, but do you have friends in your life where they're not contributing and it's not a reciprocal relationship? Because I did. I had friends that were draining me, that were shaming me for my goals. And that's a whole nother podcast episode that we're going to go through. I had friends, supposed friends, like quote friends, you can't see my air quotes, that would show up to events in our community and locally and call me terrible names. And these were supposed friends. And guys, it hurts so much to know this. And you know what? I was spending way too much time on this, way too much energy, like we talked about in number one. And eventually I just had to cut them out. I literally have them blocked on social media. I don't want to see them. It's not just a matter of unfriending. I just don't want to see them anymore because they were intentionally hurting me. And I kept hoping that it would get better. And I put so much energy into this. And you know what? It was affecting my peace. And that is not worth it. So number two, weed the gardens in your life and remove people unapologetically. 
Now, obviously, I love how everyone's like, just kick them out of your life. But sometimes that doesn't really work when it's someone that is really close to you or really important to you. So I just want to throw that caveat in there because I feel like so many people don't honor that. And they're like, it doesn't matter if it's someone really close to you, just kick them out. And sometimes it's not that easy, especially when you have kids and you might have to answer questions. (laughs) So sometimes it's not that easy. But I do want you to take a look at the people who are in your life. Are they supporting you? Are they lifting you up? Are they encouraging you? Even if it's a rough season in their life and they can't necessarily spend time with you the way that you want them to, are they at least texting you every once in a while? My friend and I were just talking about this this weekend. Friendships take work. Relationships take work. And yes, there are seasons in our life where we don't have the energy to give to those relationships. But you know what? A quick text message, even if you're a new mom and you're up in the middle of the night breastfeeding, a quick text message to send to your friends saying, I'm sorry, I don't have time for you right now. It's crazy, but I want you to know I love you and I'm thinking about you. Because that takes 30 seconds to do. So who do you have in your life that is draining you that you can say goodbye to? Because your energy is valuable and only you get to choose where you spend it. Did you like how number two went back to number one there? I'm pretty proud of myself. Number three, there is an author named Florence Scovel Shin. And when I went through transformational coaching with Jim Fortin, he recommended that book for me. And it's actually a collection of books. It's older. It's from when movies were called moving pictures. But this is one of my most favorite quotes from the book. And it's something that I really, really saw over and over again in 2020. The quote from Florence Scovel Shin is, you can control any situation if you first control yourself. Ouch, right? (laughs) I think that Let me think of how to say this because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I think that sometimes we allow our emotions to get the best of us. And when we're in tough situations, that can be a huge, huge problem. And I'm not just talking to women. I love it when people say women are too emotional. No. How many guys do we know that have like put holes in walls because they just let their rage get the best of them? Okay. So this is not pointed at women. This is for all humans, male, female, anyone that doesn't identify either way or however you identify. This is for everyone. You can control any situation if you first control yourself. And last year in 2020, we saw so many people with very little self-control. How many of these videos did we see on the news of people screaming at each other in stores because of masks or because of toilet paper or because of something like that. And usually those situations have much deeper roots. There is additional anxiety to consider and things like that. But how many of those situations could have been avoided if we practiced a little self-control? And I know that for myself, I really had to do this. I know that my kids were upset to be home. They were missing their friends. They were missing their school. And I was frustrated because I wasn't able to get the work done that I wanted to get done. Business was shut down. And so I was frustrated. We were all frustrated. We were all anxious. We didn't know what the hell was going to happen. You can't even freaking buy toilet paper. Are you kidding me? That was ridiculous. And yet, if we don't control ourselves, then the situation will just escalate and get even worse. So it really, really was a wake up call for me. And part of it is just emotional maturity and spiritual maturity and just getting older. But this quote, I feel like should be everywhere, (laughs) especially in high stress situations, like maybe TSA should have this somewhere. The quote again is you can control any situation if you first control yourself. And I saw that play out over and over again in 2020. What if you didn't have to worry about writing emails to your list for the next six months and maybe even a year? Yes, it's true. It's finally here. My students have been asking me for this for years and I have heard you and these templates are finally available. Engaging Emails Done is a quick workshop and template bundle to help you harness the power of email marketing to grow your business. You can set it and forget it and actually book more clients. 
If you're like, Brooke, I am so in, where do I grab these? Head on over to businessstraightup.com slash emails done to grab this special limited bundle. If you want to hear a little more, I feel you. I like details too. These templates are designed to be done for you to set up several months of emails in just an hour. Plus, I've recorded several how-to videos to walk you through the technical steps for several different email service providers if you're not sure how to customize and schedule them. Engaging Emails Done has not only a quickie email marketing 101 how-to if you're starting from scratch, but it includes a minimum of 12 email templates that you can schedule ahead of time to take something off of that never-ending to-do list so you can focus on what you love most. Side note, I did say a minimum of 12 because I keep thinking of things to add, so you might even get more than 12. These are brand new. I've never offered something like this before, so grab your email templates plus email marketing 101 plus tech tutorials before the price goes up. Grab these templates, tutorials, and help all at businessstraightup.com slash emails done. Again, that's businessstraightup.com slash emails done. Number four, lessons learned from the chaos of 2020. Unconventional education matters. This one came up for me over and over again, because I feel like so many of our values are tied to specific types of education. For instance, a degree, a college degree. Now, regardless of what you believe about student debt and all of those fun things, those political hot topics, the reality is that there is so much to learn that has nothing to do with a piece of paper. And that education and those bits of information and that wisdom matters just as much, dare I say, maybe even more than a traditional education. And we saw this come up last year with the death of George Floyd and the education that so many of us were kind of confronted with, right? And for us, it was something that we hadn't had to deal with on a daily basis. And so we kind of just pushed it to the side. We knew it happened, but we weren't really addressing it. We weren't really learning more about it. And we were confronted with this situation and the injustices that were taking place. And it wasn't something we could just ignore anymore. And that education matters. And I want to send a special thank you to anyone who is willing to have those conversations with me. I know that I have had team members in the past who are open to sharing and open to having those tough conversations about marginalized people, about people who are facing systemic injustices, about people who face things that I don't have to see every day. And I'm really, really grateful for the people who are willing to have those conversations with me because I know and I acknowledge that it's not their responsibility, but they do it anyway. And I'm so grateful for that. And that education matters. And that is not something that you'll be able to get a degree on. Now, can you get a degree in certain pieces of that? Absolutely. But when it comes to the stories and the real life situations that people go through all the time, those are not necessarily classes that you can take at your university. That education matters. Opening your heart and being willing to have those tough conversations can help you learn so much more than you would ever learn getting a degree. And again, I'm not saying that getting a degree doesn't matter. My son's chosen life path will absolutely require a degree. That's what he wants to do. And that's amazing. And we are encouraging that for sure. But there are other things that we need to learn and need to honor that aren't necessarily tied to a degree. Number five, I am the CEO of my life. Now, this is kind of tied to my energy is valuable and only I can choose where I spend it. But this applies to everything. You get to design your life. I get to design my life. It amazes me to see how many people are just subject to things that they don't want to do. All of these decisions that they feel like they have to do. And I'm telling you right now, if you live your life based on the have to do things, you're probably feeling very overwhelmed and annoyed. (laughs) I would be. (laughs) I am the CEO of my life. I get to decide how I live my life. I get to decide where my time goes. That's a really hard one because so many people say, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Guess what? 
If you're saying that, but you're watching Netflix at night for several hours, you do have time for that. You just choose to spend it elsewhere. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Quite frankly, I love me some Grace and Frankie on Netflix, okay? So that's okay. I'm not saying you should never watch Netflix, but we need to stop with this whole, I don't have time for that. You are the CEO of your life. I am the CEO of my life. I get to decide how my life is spent. How do I live? Where do I spend my time? Where do I spend my money? Where do I spend my energy? I am the CEO. I get to design all of that. And you do too. Number six is a special shout out to my six-year-old daughter. Stop apologizing. Holy shit, ladies. Why do we do this? And yes, I'm speaking to the ladies and I'm speaking to myself too, because I am in this boat as well. Why are we apologizing for everything? Oh my gosh. My daughter apologizes constantly and it's starting to drive me crazy. It's to the point now where I ask her, did you hurt someone? And she'll say no. And I say, did you do something wrong? And she'll say no. Then I'll say, stop apologizing. We do not need to apologize for existing Oh my gosh, y'all. I watch women go into Facebook groups and especially photography specific Facebook groups, business specific. And the first words in their post are, I'm so sorry, but mm, no, stop. We have to stop apologizing. You have every right to ask questions. You have every right to exist, to stand up, to take up space, which is going to lead me to number seven. (laughs) This is from one of my most favorite books from 2020. I just bought the hard copy. And for anyone who knows me, I am an audiobook kind of girl. So if I buy the hard copy, you know, it's good. (laughs) Number seven, take up space. Here's a quote from Jen Hatmaker from her book, Fierce, Free and Full of Fire. Quote, this culture is rabid to tell women how much oxygen they can use, space they can take, tables they can join, opinions they are allowed, end quote. Damn, ain't that the damn truth? Oh my gosh. Take up space. Stop apologizing, ladies. If you are a big woman, and I'm not talking about size, I'm talking personality, You walk into a room, you're laughing loud, you talk loud, you're boisterous, you're gregarious, you're outgoing. Never apologize for that. I have spent my life apologizing for this. If you are a quiet woman and you don't want to take up that much space and you just enjoy the quieter moments of life, that's okay too. We are constantly being told that we have to be something other than what we are. We either have to be quieter. Oh, not everything has to be about you. Why do you have to be the center of attention? Or if someone's too quiet, you really need to speak up. You really need to not be as quiet. You need to not be shy. I want to invite you to take up the amount of space that you are meant to take up based on how you feel in your heart, how you were created because no one else can decide that for you. And if they say you're too much, tough. And if they say you're not enough, tough. We need to stop apologizing for what we want in our lives, for our desires, for our wants, for our needs, and own them. And if someone else doesn't like it, that's their problem, not ours. Seven and eight go hand in hand, ladies. Stop apologizing and take up space. If you have not read Jen Hatmaker's book, highly recommend it. It is amazing. I just gave it to a friend for her birthday because I feel like it's a message that every woman needs to learn. I will probably ask my daughter to read it when she's older. She's a little too young right now, but the reality is that we are constantly being told to be something we're not. And you know what? Why the hell not? I mean, we have industries that are literally billion dollar industries that are built on us not liking ourselves. Right now I'm reading Jamie Kern Lima's book, Believe It. And it's really interesting to hear some of her stories about fighting that. She, for anyone that doesn't know, is the founder of It Cosmetics. She sold her company for $1.2 billion. Yes, that's billion with a B. (laughs) She sold her company and she built it because she was encouraging women who did not necessarily look like the standard beauty photos to stand up and be a part of the conversation, to be a part of the advertising. 
She encouraged that and she was told no over and over again. She was even told no because someone didn't think that women would buy makeup from someone with her weight. Again, can't take up space. There are industries that have literally been built on us not liking ourselves. And while I'm not saying that those industries are terrible because there are good parts to the beauty industry and others... The reality is that loving ourselves and taking up the amount of space that we want to take up, regardless of what anyone else thinks, that is valuable. And we have every right to do so. (sighs) I feel like that could be a podcast episode by itself. So I'm going to move on to number eight, because I could literally talk about this all day long, especially when it comes to business owners. And actually, before I move on, business owners, ladies, can I just tell you something real quick? There is a local wedding photographer who literally created his own award with his own award website that is registered to him (laughs) and now splashes it all over social media saying he's an award winning photographer. I see this behavior a lot when it comes to men who are not afraid to step into what they know. Why do we have these fears? Why are we afraid to charge what we're worth, to take up space, to say, you know what? I am an expert at this. I really want us to step forward and to start encouraging each other, sharing our wins, saying that, you know what? This girl is a badass and I'm so proud of her. You probably hear or read all the time on podcasts and courses, various communities, that you need to do certain things or have specific processes in place to help with your business. Whether it's lead follow-up, email templates, or workflow, all of this can be so overwhelming, right? Especially when you don't know where to start. I have spent 15 years creating processes that are repeatable for my own business. And last year, I finally launched my online shop where my email templates, workflows, and questionnaires are all available for purchase. And just for my amazing podcast listeners, I have a special code available for you for 10% off of any product on the shop. Just head over to shopwithbrook.com. Don't forget the E on the end of my name and use the code BSU podcast, like business straight up podcast to get 10% off of any product, anything on the shop. Don't let overwhelm or all of the shoulds take precious hours of your time that you could spend with your family or doing what you really love. Check out the templates and pre-done systems that you can copy and paste and implement at shopwithbrook.com to start rocking your marketing and your business today. Okay. On to number eight, because <laughs> again, <laughs> that could be its own episode entirely. Number eight, it is okay to want more out of life. Now, this is another one of my favorite books from 2020, The Middle Finger Project by Ash Amberger. This quote is from Ash in her book, Why Can't I Just Be Happy Like Everyone Else? Why can't I just be normal? I had gone to great lengths to fit in with the people I perceived to be normal not yet realizing that my greatest advantage in this world was the fact that I wasn't, end quote. Ash shares in her book that she wanted so much to be a part of this middle class and a very specific group of people because of how she grew up. And she realizes that that's not really her. And number eight, in my top lessons from 2020 and the chaos that happened last year It's okay to want more out of life. I have struggled for years with the label of selfish, and I remember why, and I know why. But again, that's another podcast episode for another time. I want to ask you, are you okay wanting more? Or are you constantly making yourself smaller because you feel bad about it? Man, I do this to myself all the time. I see it in my students too. Do not apologize. Do not... Think that you're being selfish because you want more out of life. You may have an amazing life now. Guess what? It's okay to want even more. I have an amazing life. I do. My marriage, even though we have ups and downs, my family, my kids, my home, my business, I love what I have built. And guess what? I'm going to take it even further. And I used to be ashamed of that. And guess what? Mm, Not anymore. Zero fucks, (laughs) y'all. 
I am going to take it further. I'm going to be bigger than I have ever been. I'm not playing small anymore. And even just saying that scares me. And it brings up all these feelings in me of, oh, but you should just be grateful. You should just be happy with what you have. Bullshit. Wanting more does not mean that you're not happy with what you have. Wanting more out of life does not make you ungrateful. Because when you have more, you can bless more people. I want to be an example of what's possible for all of my students. I want to lift the tide so that all of my students and female business owners out there can say, you know what? If she can do it, I can do it too. It is okay to want more out of life. Number nine, be deliberate in enjoying your blessings. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I feel like so many people group blessings into like family. What do we have? Self-care that are bubble baths? No, 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 no. I'm talking all the blessings. Okay. Sometimes I just like to drive my car around and get some takeout and play Pokemon and listen to podcasts. Judge me if you want. It is what it is. (laughs) That's a little blessing. I really love doing it. It's kind of my little self-date. And Again, I used to be ashamed of it. I didn't really tell many people I did it, but it is what it is. It's something I enjoy. It's a blessing that I love. I also love to go for bike rides. Another little blessing that I can do because I live close to a huge park and reservoir, so I can do that. Be deliberate in really enjoying your blessings. And I'm not just talking about the things that everyone else says are your blessings. I'm talking about the things that really bring you joy, the things that you love, the things that light you up because they're there for a reason. Number 10, audacity. (laughs) I have another podcast episode coming up about this one because my word for the year is audacious. And I'll share more about that in that episode. But I found a quote that said her audacity was her crown. And I found another quote that said, earn the respect of others by having the audacity to be yourself. And I'm sorry, I don't know the sources of either one of those, but I want to invite you to be audacious, to do what everyone else says you shouldn't do, to step up into a higher role, to serve your clients, to reach out to your clients, to share more of yourself, because I promise you in your story, is something that someone can relate to. Now, obviously, share what you're comfortable with. Don't go too far if it makes you super uncomfortable. But I want to invite you to be audacious with me, to step up and say, no one else gets to decide anymore how I live my life. No one else gets to decide anymore what I do with my business. No one else gets to decide anymore how I share and how I show up in my business and in my life. You are a fierce fucking force of nature. Own your audacity. Again, another point that I could just go on and on and on and on about, but I'm going to stop there because I really wanted this episode to be short. It is a Just the Tip Tuesday, right? I want it to be short, sweet, and awesome. And I want to encourage you to think about your wins for 2020. I know now it's March. I'm sorry. I'm a little late. Everyone else does theirs in January. But for that reason, I actually intentionally waited because January is full of this like hustle, hustle, hustle vibe, right? January is full of this like, let's make plans, get shit done. And I get it because I do the same thing. But then February comes around and we're like, oh, maybe that goal is a little too big. Or maybe I shouldn't really think that way. That self-doubt starts to creep in again. And so that's why I wanted to do this after January. (laughs) Because the reality is that so many people make these resolutions and these goals at the beginning of a new year. And then they fall off the wagon and then you start to beat yourself up for it, right? I knew I shouldn't have tried that. I knew I shouldn't have thought that. I knew I shouldn't have planned that. I want to encourage you to look back at 2020, to look at your wins And to look at your own lessons, because that was a crazy year, guys, (laughs) guys and gals. I always say guys, I need to get past that, right? That was a crazy year, but it doesn't have to be crazy negative. I really want to encourage you to look back at 2020, start with a fresh piece of paper, get your colored pens, whatever floats your boat and start writing out some wins. Even if your wins are, I learned how to grocery shop online, so I didn't have to go to a store. (laughs) even if they're small, they still matter. Look at your wins. Look at what happened. Look at your lessons. How much did you grow? 
Did you do amazing things even if they were little? Did you figure out for the first time how to actually go paddleboarding? That was me. (laughs) Look at these wins because even though they might be small, they add up into changing you into the person that you are now and the person that you ultimately want to be, not just in your life, but in your business and with your family as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so happy to start to share some of this stuff with you that I really enjoy sharing and I hesitate to share because it doesn't line up with the business plan, right? (laughs) But I'm excited to actually start to share some of these things with you because these things matter. These are the things that are going through my head, the things that I'm working on, the things that I'm working past, the things that I'm working with my students on. So if you are someone who loves to help other people and you know someone who can use this information, maybe they just need a little bit of encouragement. Can you forward this episode over to them? I would so appreciate it. And if you were like, Brooke, I love this episode. This was amazing. I have a way that you can thank me. Can you head on over to iTunes and leave a review? I know you hear this a lot from other podcasts and it seems small and silly, but those reviews can mean so much to us in the podcast world. It helps me know how I can better serve you. And it helps me to have amazing guests like the guests that you'll meet tomorrow. So hit pause now, leave a review. And if you screenshot your review before hitting submit and email it over to hello at businessstraightup.com, I will send you a free gift. Please leave those reviews so that we can continue helping you every week with this free content. And thank you to all of my listeners. I want you to know how much I truly enjoy doing this podcast. It is so awesome for me to just reach out and give you a little bit of encouragement because that's what I want. I want to be an example of what's possible. And if I can do that and inspire someone else to stand up and say, well, if Brooke can do it, I can do it too. You guys, I'm not a unicorn. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I get excited over stupid shit. Right now, I have this silly little bell on my desk that just brings me so much joy. (laughs) My son calls it my peasant bell. (laughs) I'm like, that's not what it's for, but it doesn't matter. It's fun. I want to be an example of what's possible. I am not special. I'm not some unicorn. I'm not someone who like was born knowing how to market my business. (laughs) I want you to know that you can do this too. You can grow your business to multiple six figures. You can do everything that your heart wants, everything that you desire. You are worth all of it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Another episode of Just the Tip Tuesday. As always, if you have any questions, head on over to the community and you can reach that at businessstraightup.com slash community. It will reroute you to our little corner of Facebook where you can share my most recent post that was the most excitable post, I guess, had the most responses this week, was sharing a photo of your dog. I love to see your dogs. I love to see your fur babies. Maybe not even dogs. Maybe you have cats or lizards or whatever. Scales? I don't know. (laughs) Feathers? (laughs) Birds scare me. That's okay. Come on over to the community. Leave a comment. Say hi. Wave. And just say, hey, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have and help you however I can help you. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much for listening to Business Straight Up. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Check out the show notes for this and all of the episodes at businessstraightuppodcast.com. And I can't wait to talk with you again. Have a great day. 